The news comes to you compliments of the National Bank of the Virgin Islands and Digicel, Cyril B. Romney Tertola, Peer Park and Agico Insurances, Banco Popular, Simply Secure, and NV Salon, Spa, Nail and Barbershops. For the first time since the AstraZeneca vaccine has been made available to the people of the Virgin Islands, the territory is out of supplies. Uptake of vaccines have increased with the implementation of measures to require vaccinations of certain entertainment facilities and changes in the U.S. entry requirements. The BVI has therefore run short to date of the vaccines while we wait the next shipment of AstraZeneca vaccine on the, 7th, sorry, on the 9th of September 2021. To date, the vaccination rate stands at 51.6%, representing 15,468 persons being registered as fully vaccinated. Another 2,139 persons await their second doses, which, when completed, the number of persons fully vaccinated will be 58.7%, representing 17,000 607 persons. While these figures are headed in the right direction, the fact remains that we are seeking to attain a fully vaccinated goal or herd immunity of 75%, which will represent 22,500 persons. Minister for Health and Social Development, Honorable Carvin Malone, announced the last tonight, September 30, 2021. To date, the United Kingdom continues to fulfill its commitment to the Virgin Islands, despite the fact that for previous supplies, hundreds of doses had to be dumped, expired due to vaccination hesitancy. However, on this occasion, it's the first time a batch of supplies is fully utilized, leaving none to expire. On the other hand, the health minister reported the prevalence in the territory, variants of concern and interest, one of which is said to be escaping immunity. The chief medical officer, Dr. Ronald Georges, have reported that of the 81,850 COVID samples that were analyzed at the Dr. D. Orlando Smith Hospital, 2,718 were declared as positive, while 2,635 cases have recovered, 37 deaths have occurred, and there currently exist 46 active cases. Only three, three of the 46 cases were discovered on entry uh, during the testings for days 0, 7, and 14. Again, as I reported the last time I was here, the most troubling aspect of the report is that 43 of the 46 cases were found within the community and clearly, my people, we are not out of the woods. At the cabinet meeting held on the 30th of, sorry, on the 29th of September 2021, it was decided and cabinet made the decision um, that it will recommend that the curfew order, which expires on the 3rd of October, be extended for a further period of 14 days to the 17th of October. In fact, Cabinet has made this recommendation to the National Security Council, and that will be forthcoming. Cabinet decided that the public health COVID-19 control and suppression order, which expires on the 30th September, which is today, be further extended. Cabinet has decided that fully vaccinated staff and patrons of nightclubs be required to provide identification and proof of vaccination. Following representation by club owners, and the particular association, Cabinet decided that partially vaccinated staff and patrons at nightclubs be required to provide the negative results of a rapid test no later than seven days or no older than seven days. 
meaning that if you have taken the first vaccine, and if you are to take a rapid test within a seven-day period, or during a seven-day period, you can present this for entry. Cabinet has also decided that the adjustments be made to the entry protocol to allow all vessels with only fully vaccinated captain, crew, and passengers, including, and this is the good news, foreign-based charter boats to travel to the territory and enter at the designated fully vaccinated ports only of entry, be it Great Harbor, Jocelyn Dyke, Sopus Hole, West End, and Spanish Town, Virgin Gorda. Of course, the entries will always be there for Rotown and the TB Letsum Airport. We would be looking in terms of making Anagata a point of entry. Again, we, as we continue to reopen our territory, we are keenly aware of the challenges being faced by all nations and territories around the world. Tonight, it is important to me, for me to bring some important developments to the attention of the listening public. While the ministry has been detecting and managing several small clusters of COVID-19 across the territory, we have not seen a return to the type of transmission that resulted in the great spikes in cases seen several months ago. As the government continues to relax protocols to allow economic activities, we have to remain vigilant. We have to continue to adhere to public health measures and quarantine orders for persons who may be found positive and also for their contacts. It would have been reported in the media that there has been an outbreak associated with the construction company on the island of Virgin Order. This large cluster occurred within a company with over 90% of vaccinated coverage, where 30 persons were found to be positive with coronavirus across the organization. This represents 30 out of the 76, or 39%, of all reported employees of the company, the majority of whom were vaccinated persons. And I'm getting to something here. This is indeed quite concerning. This week, the Ministry of Health received reports from CAFA of genetic typing of samples collected in late August. Of the samples sent for genetic typing, four were reported for the mu, for mu, a variant of interest, and one was reported positive for Delta, a variant of concern. What this means is that these two variants are circulating in the territory. It does not mean that only these five exist. The mu variant is thought to be able to escape immunity. And we are seeing in this cluster a large number of persons who are vaccinated and are also positive. We are not out of the woods. This week, additional samples have been sent for typing and the results will be reported in the next two weeks when CAFA delivers the result of the genetic typing. It is understandable and it is critical for the ministry to move swiftly and decisively to ensure that any potential situation is curtailed. In a proactive measure, a number of cases and their close contacts, including vaccinated persons, have been quarantined. The public is asked to continue to remain vigilant and cooperate with the authorities as all measures taken are aimed at reducing hospitalization, 
avoiding fatalities and the complete reopening of our borders. With this JTV News update, Kathy Richards. We know that where you choose to bank matters, and it is your vote on what your funds do in strengthening our community. As your official bank of paradise, we invest and support the lifeblood of our economy by helping in the realization of personal goals for homeownership, education, and entrepreneurial visions, which support small businesses. We make it our place to connect with persons and worthy causes, and we have been doing so for more than 30 years. Where your money goes and what your dollars empower are your choice. And we thank you for choosing us, a bank that gives where it matters the most, for you, for our community, and a happier tomorrow. The National Bank of the Virgin Islands. Stop. 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 Think. Think. Before you act. Before you act. Think before you act. You value traditions. To You value music. You value education. Family. I love you. <laughs> Service. Thank you. You're welcome. Love. Life. At Popular, we're committed to you and everything our community values. For the things you value the most, count on us. Popular. Our reliance on digital systems has opened new vulnerabilities to sophisticated cyber attacks. Simply Secure's security management solution helps overcome these challenges. Our service includes 24 7, 360 degree protection for all computers and servers with automatic restoration, security audits, and penetration testing. Don't wait for disaster to strike. Contact us at infosimplysecuregroup.com. At